Hi friends, the idea to make a metal detector is a very attractive one. It can be used for various purposes, searching for old wiring, water pipes, and of course a treasure. In fact, the concept of a metal detector is very extensive and they are very different. The classic principle of searching for metal is used in a variety of devices, ranging from simple detectors to radar stations. But we will not go into the theory, perhaps some other time. Now we will go to the point. Recently, so-called pulse metal detectors, which contain only one coil and have a relatively simple design, are gaining much popularity. At the same time, they provide quite good sensitivity and high reliability. Pulse metal detector works on the principle of receive transmit. The search coil in such a metal detector can operate in two modes, reception and transmission. The signal emitted by the coil generates or excites four cold eddy currents in the metal, which are caught by the same coil. Different metals have different electrical conductivities and many metal detectors are able to recognize this with sufficiently high accuracy, determining what kind of metal is in the ground. The given circuit of the metal detector is very common in the net, but the photos of real devices and reviews are little, so it was decided to repeat it in order to understand what it is in reality. All I had to do was creating a printed circuit board and solder the components. The PCB turned out to be quite compact. It was made using the laser iron technology. In the description under the video, you will find a link to the project archive with a printed circuit board file in the lay format, as well as the circuit and a list of components. And if you want your homemade products to look like a factory product, I recommend using the services of the GLC PCB company, which is producing printed circuit boards. They provide the shortest time to manufacture the boards, only 24 hours from the date of the order, fast delivery, and low pricing ranging from $2 for 10 boards with dimensions of 10 by 10 cm for any color. You can be sure of the quality and scale of production by viewing my video from the GLC factory. A link to the video and website of the company can be found in the description. The circuit has many advantages. Firstly, this is the presence of only one coil. Secondly, an extremely simple and not capricious circuit, which practically doesn't require additional configuration. And finally, it is built on just one chip. After the assembly and verification, additional features of this circuit surfaced. Namely, it has a low sensitivity to the ground, which is a very important point. If desired, the metal detector can be configured to see only non-ferrous metals and ignore ferrous metals. This is a kind of metal selectivity function or so-called effect of discrimination, which is available on many commercial metal detectors. Among the shortcomings is shallow depth of search. It detects large metal objects at a distance of up to 30 cm, medium-sized coins up to 5 and 8 cm. This is not enough, many will say. Well, it depends on the purposes. For example, I assembled this metal detector to search for old water pipes in the wall and this task was 100% complete. If the characteristics don't suit you, then look toward other models, for example the pirate. This small device is good by its simplicity and for certain tasks will be indispensable assistant. Let's look at the circuit. Device is built on the basis of CMOS chip CD4011, which contains four logical elements, two A and D dash N O T. The circuit consists of four parts, reference and search generators, a mixer and a signal amplifier. The latter is built just on one transistor. As a dynamic head, it is preferable to use headphones with a resistance from 16 to 64 ohms, since the output of the amplifier isn't designed for low impedance load. The metal detector works simply. Initially, the search and reference oscillators are turned to approximately the same frequency. In this case, there is no difference in frequency and therefore, we will not hear anything from the headphones. The frequency of the reference generator is fixed with the possibility of manual adjustment by rotating the variable resistor. The frequency of the search generator is highly dependent on the parameters of the LC circuit. 
If there is a metal object near the surge coil, the LC circuit frequency changes. In other words, the surge generator frequency changes relative to the reference one. Then the signal from both generators enter the mixer and the difference of their frequencies comes out in the form of a sound signal. Then it is filtered and fed to the amplifier cascade, for which the headphone is the load. I will immediately say about the size of the coil. The larger the diameter of the coil, the more sensitive the metal detector. But big coils have their drawbacks, so you need to choose the optimal parameters. For this circuit, the most optimal diameter ranges from 15 to 20 cm. The wire diameter is 0.4 to 0.6 mm. The number of turns is 40 to 50 if the diameter of the coil is within 20 cm. In my case, the number of turns and the diameter is smaller than necessary, so the sensitivity is not so hot. If you plan to use a metal detector in high humidity conditions, the coil should be sealed. Now about the adjustment. If at the first turn on the device doesn't react to the metal, but you are sure that all the components are working, most likely the frequency difference is outside of the sound range and the sound is simply not listened by man. In this case, it's worthwhile to rotate the variable resistor until the sound signal appears, then slowly rotate that resistor until you hear a low frequency signal from the speaker, and continue rotation in the same direction until the signal disappears. This completes the setup. For a more accurate setting, I advise to use a multi-turn resistor or two conventional resistors, one of which will make coarse adjustment and the second for smoother tuning. I forgot to say that all the adjustment work is done in the absence of a metal near the coil. Well, at the end we bring a metal object to the coil and make sure that the tone of the sound signal changes, that is, the device reacts to the metal. So that you can hear, I used a low impedance speaker plus an external microphone. The previously mentioned effect of discrimination of metals was observed in case if both generators operated at a frequency of 130 to 135 kHz. As we see from experience, the sensitivity to ferrous metals is almost zero. The device can be powered from a constant source with a voltage from 3 to 15 volts. The best option is to use a 9 volt battery of 6F22 type. The current consumption in this case will be in the range from 15 to 30 mA, depending on the resistance of the load. The box of the metal detector was taken from a Chinese device, which should be scaring dogs. That device itself was bad, but the box came in handy. There is a compartment for a 9 volt battery, and there is enough space to install a board, variable resistors, a 3.5 mm jack, a switch, and a power indicator. I needed to create a compact handheld metal detector, hence, I came to this decision. Well, that's all for today. A link to the archive with a printed circuit board will be found in the description. There will also be links to all components for the assembly of this detector, as well as links to industrial metal detectors. 
for all questions as always you can contact our group on this i say goodbye to new meetings with you was kaisyan tv